YouTube recording. Yes, there we go. Right. So uh, I have um, I haven't played this game obviously since it came out yesterday. Uh, while I was at work, uh, they did release um, a multiplayer uh, version of the tactical uh, combat engine, probably for balancing, but also for getting more funds. Unfortunately. <laughs> Um, that was called Factions, uh, and I did, I did actually download it from Steam, it was free, but uh, I never... So let's go. The gods are dead. In their wake, man and giant survived through a tenuous alliance, driving black destroyers called Dredge deep into the northern wastes. Now is an, area, an era of growth and trade. Life goes on. Only one thing has stopped. The sun. It has been several long months on the road. The first signs of snowfall accost us on our approach to Strand, largest of the trade cities on the Val human borders, and our last collection before returning to the capital. Several days ago, the sun simply came to a stop in the sky. Though during these long winter days, none of us can be certain how long it has been this way. Some of the men in the caravan have taken it as a dire omen. I am not quick to superstition, but I myself will be glad to be done with this year's rounds. We have been warned by stranded travelers about brigands on the path through Richhorn, our road home. Our captain seems unconcerned. Perhaps he is as eager as I to be done here. We will rest here this day and inquire further when we speak to the governor. Yeah, I can't be helped, Skull Jagger. Have a nice one. So, uh, right, we are uh, in the tutorial battle, and I think I did this once. Uh, it was uh, a horrible, horrible long time ago, so I don't remember anything. You arrived just in time. The chieftain in red and his men are now looking at a tougher fight than they bargained for. Click and drag around the screen to see your surroundings. Click the check mark to continue. Great. Click and drag around the screen. Oh uh, yeah. They're using these scene. But then like you could see from the introduction, everything is uh, very lovingly handcrafted. 
so it's a pretty different uh, <laughs> there's a polar bears chain to the wall there so it's a very different style Uh, these portraits show the order of initiative, taking turns from left to right. Your allies are blue, the enemy is red. It's your turn to act. Right. Movement happens before action. This ring shows your shield banger is active. The blue tiles around him show where he can move. Some characters fill more tiles than others. Horned allies are a race of giants called Varl, who take up four tiles each, while humans fill a single tile. This can have a huge impact on your strategy. Indeed. Click the tile you want to move to, then click the check mark to confirm. Move your shield banger here to get him in attack range. Right. To target an enemy, click the tile on which they stand. Allied tiles are blue, the enemies are red. Target this enemy now by clicking his tile. You can choose to either attack the enemy's strength or break his armor. The numbers beneath each icon, 2, 5, 2. Show the damage you will do to that stat. Ah, I see. 2 armor or 5 strength. Right. Strength counts as both health and damage. A loss of two strength means you'll now do less, two less damage. If strength falls to zero, the character falls in battle. Armor blocks strength damage but can be reduced by a break attack. By breaking armor you open them up to take more damage in the future. The enemy has only five strength remaining. A strength attack will kill him. Click the fists, fist now to attack his strength and confirm your choice, yes. Click again though. Ah! Whoops. Bye bye. He's down. Each time you make a kill your renown grows, which is used later to improve your characters. Great. After taking an action your turn ends next. Uh, it's up to the enemy, oh yeah. Turns always alternate, uh, even if you are outnumbered. Despite being at full strength, the chieftain will do little damage against your shield banger's high armor. Where can I see that? Now it's your Warhawk's turn. He appears to be out of range of these enemies, but all characters can use willpower to boost their actions. Willpower is a limited resource, so use it wisely. Clicking on the gold tiles, the character can move further than usual at the cost of one willpower, the gold tile. Red pulsating tiles beneath your enemies show how close you'll have to be to get in attack range. Uh -huh. So how many tiles is that for him? Is it one tile for him? Two. Yeah, two. Willpower. Standard attacks only affect a single enemy, but your Warhawk has a special ability that gives him a unique advantage. Click on your Warhawk's tile to access his ability. Tempest. Enemies adjacent to the target takes one strength damage. Description of the ability will appear, blah blah blah. The Warhawk's Tempest allows him to slam multiple enemies at once. Select an enemy and then confirm. You actually get an achievement for completing the, the tutorial there. <laughs> wow. They make quick work of the chieftain's bodyguards. When uh, there is only one enemy left, players enter pillage mode. What? During pillage, each character moves in order and there is, are no more guaranteed turns. 
check the initiative to see how the order has changed. Your allies now get to move twice in a row. If a character does not move on his turn, he can rest to regain one willpower. Chieftain will rest this turn. Not so smart. Your shield banger won't be able to finish the job with a normal attack, but willpower can be used to boost your damage. Click the fist and then the stars above the fist to add willpower. You can see the damage number go up as you add willpower. You click a star and then the green check to check mark to kill this enemy. We need nine. Right. Into the coals you go. Phone's lying dead, yes. I couldn't read that. It was a bit too quick. Five renown. Like a rabid wolf, that one. How did it come to this? We fool ourselves believing that peace will last. My grandfather built all this from a poor fishing village, you know. He watched the gods die, watched the chaos that followed, watched man and var slaughter each other. Even before the threats arose. All we've done is traded one struggle for another. Now that there are no more threats to war against, we war against ourselves. This chieftain meant to kill me, and he's not the first. A dozen families in the city would gladly take my chair. This one had men waylaying merchants, both north and south of the city, strangling trade quite well, I would add, though he denied it to his last. This sort of wolf doesn't stop biting because the head is cut off. It just grows a new head. I am in a bad way, my friend. Help me finish this fight and I'll gladly send you on your way with Doppler King's tithe. Take any men you need. They're loyal. I promise you that. They will meet you down in the proving grounds. Only the sun has stopped. You're approached by a familiar man who walks in step with you as you're leaving the Great Hall. He cuts to the chase. Cut to the chase. Eirik, steward of Strand. I manage the governor's business. Yuben, isn't it? Right, so we get into the conversation mode here. Yuben, isn't it? It is. The governor tells me you'll be giving us a hand. Seems a bit chaotic around here, Eirik. It's been worse. We got a lot of irons in the fire. What does he want exactly? Skullflings that you didn't hack up in the Great Hall scattered after you took out their chieftain. The governor just wants to make sure they stay down. I was hoping you'd join me at the marketplace by the docks. If there's anyone left to worry about, I know who can tell us. Right. By the docks, he says. Unfortunately, we don't have any tooltips to tell us. Alright, we can only go there. <laughs> Mark it. Yeah, so basically, uh, I think this is pretty much going to be the way the game plays out. I think you have uh, a relatively limited amount of choices probably what you can do in the beginning at least. Great morale. Five renown. Zero days. 100 days of supplies. 32 varl. Seems nice. So we're a giant. 
So what are our options? Can we switch difficulty in mid-game? Yes, we can. Renown. Well, let's go to the market and see. Let me handle this. You meander through rows of open face houses and eroded stalls. Colored canvases flap on flap on a briny current. One man in particular blanch in particular blanches at you as you approach. Had I'm not in the mood today. For for what? Talking to an idiot. The scofflings, scofflings chieftain bled out about an hour ago had. So when you tell me what rat anus the rest of them crawled back into, nobody's going to try to kill you this time. Nice. I don't talk to... They don't talk to me. Hmm. Don't have the patience for this. Really seems like uh, this guy kind of a, is kind of a dick. Let's say nothing. Iric overturns his flimsy table, scattering Had's assortment of junk across the ground. God's Eric, laying it on a bit heavy, don't you think? Where are the scofflings? Nobleman. Up by the east wall. But that was months ago, last I know. Had skulks away with a wave of Eirik's hand, gathering things from his uh, hovel. Disappearing for a while until, his blows, uh, un until this blows over, you figure. Your bodyguard steps forward. Gunulf. Are we done here? Juven. Gunnolf, were you wearing green back at the Great Hall? No, just bought them while you were walking around. Why? <laughs> you look like a frog. They look good. I'm glad you care. Right, so probably this is going to be a lot of the uh, interaction stuff also. Gunnolf goes off to look at more stalls. Eirik, that man of yours seems unreliable at best. A blind dog wouldn't trust Had, but he used to be a scoffling. If they're licking their wounds, they've probably gone to old haunts, not new ones. Nobleman, it's a mead hall. Best I can tell, the name's ironic. Listen, I know a guy who would love to put a few of these skulls in the ground. I'm going to find them. I'll meet you. I'll meet you there. After this, I'm done here. Should we have an approach of some sort? What a luxury! Come on. You've already mopped up worse today. Just make sure the governor remembers his promise. Double the usual tithe. I'll remind him. Right. So, a mead hall. I see. Mead house. We get these neon signs. I would actually prefer just a normal uh, cursor. Right, let's go there. You arrive in front of what must be Nobleman. A few minutes later, Eirik appears uh, with a weather-beaten man introduced as Valgard. I'll point them out, Eirik says over his sh shoulder. Ready? Let's get it over with. 
That's the spirit, says Valgard. Okay. Here we go. Valgard boots the front door open so hard it won't close again without repair. As you enter the hall, Eirik is already at the head of a table, his axe drawn. Wide-eyed drunken scofflings scramble to find their own weapons, turning tables and mead steins in the process. Bunch of them actually. Do I get to control everyone? Valigard, shield wall adds one armor to allies and himself while adjacent to the ally. So this is going to take a while to figure out, I think. These guys can probably run up to us. Ready, yes. Okay. So we act first, then one of their guys. Thug leader. Oh, we don't get to... Oh yeah, we get to move. What kind of hmm, attack? I don't know if you can attack diagonally. Also, I can't see who the thug leader is. It would be nice. Oh, there he is. Nice 2D graphics here. I really like it. So, what to do? Good morning, Snarfu. Bit different uh, content here today. I just started, so uh, I have no idea, but uh, the 2D graphics is pretty delicious. Nice, uh, nice change uh, when you've been playing 3D games for a while. Uh, we're gonna try moving there and we'll see if we can attack. Yes, we can attack diagonally. Nice. So I should just kill him in one blow, right? I'm just trying to figure out the game mechanics. I went through the tutorial, but uh, yeah, you know. Oh, we can't attack diagonally. Well, that sucks. So then uh, the thug leader gets to move. And it's Eirik's turn. Yes. The cool thing about it is really the handcrafted uh, nature of the, the game. But that opens uh, up the question, of course, uh, how much attention could they give to um, gameplay aspect? I know they had a lot of time uh, like tweaking, um, tweaking the battle system because they released uh, a multiplayer 
version uh, called Factions, which allowed them to tweak, I think. But... Okay. He blocked that attack. Yeah, 11 defense. So, now we should be able to move into range here. <laughs> Wait, I thought this was a point-and-click adventure game. <laughs> no, uh, it's... whoops. Cancel that. How do I cancel move? There we go. No, it's not a point-and-click adventure game. It's uh, a turn-based uh, tactical combat RPG game with a story mode. Oh yeah, I can do the Tempest, so I should actually... Um... Yeah, we can hit him. Nice. He takes one damage there, yeah. I forgot he has an attack that can sweep uh, enemies who are surrounding him. Let's see. Well, I guess we should just finish you off. Don't need to use any special attack to kill you, I think. Should be enough. Wow. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. The armor reducts. I should have. Uh, Increased his attack by one, then I would have killed him. Hmm. Return the favor. Getting hit triggers a counter attack for one armor damage. Light step. The landsman can move through allies. Then he can give two willpower to an ally at any range. Yeah, I'm sure there's quite a depth of uh, strategy actually for um, I think he can take care of himself I'm gonna attack now I have to figure this out he has 12 resistance to attack then can either damage his uh, shield for one point or we can do two strength damage to him actually we can do more since we can use willpower so we could finish him off in two turns we're gonna invest some some power in this Breaking armor is extremely important, apparently, yeah. Can you actually increase your armor? Yeah, you can. You can break three points of armor. Break two points of armor, my next attack would do four damage. Mm. But I have lots of willpower too. If I break three points of armor, I would do five damage, but I still wouldn't. Yeah, then I can invest one willpower and kill them. No, that's stupid. Let's just use the, use this to kill them outright. Next turn, I can kill them. So, Giant's turn. Uh, getting a bit surrounded here, maybe. Getting hit triggers a counter attack, yeah. Can do three damage to health. Two damage to armor. Th 
3 damage to armor and I kill him with the next blow. Oh, wait, he's gonna attack me actually. He's gonna lose one armor probably. Let's try that. Should be enough to just damage his armor. Interesting. Oh yeah, they have special attacks as well, of course. But this is a nice situation. Now I can attack both these guys with a Tempest. Normal strength damage to two adjacent enemies. Starting from target and going clockwise. Should attack him then. I guess. Nice. <laughs> I have to get this now, yeah. Well, we'll see how it plays out. Uh, there's been lots and lots of time uh, invested in uh, the graphics obviously so uh, what I want to know is how is the rest of the game but uh, yeah I've been looking forward to this game for a while so that's why I'm actually taking a break from my Dark Souls uh, uh, project or schedule to, to play this so what can we do we can do a stone wall or attack can just kill this guy wow Ten attack. Yeah. Let's just kill this guy. Raid Master. Yeah, well, Irik, you know, you were kind of a dick to that uh, guy in the market anyway, so. Maybe you should move. You can move there and attack that guy. What was your special ability, by the way? Rally. Rally. Ninety percent. Oh yeah, it's pretty low now, so. You can prep him for uh, for damage by breaking his armor. Then we have to keep a track on uh, what kind of initiative they have. Shield banger. Nine. Everybody is going to lose armor when they attack this guy. Maybe I should use that. Use his attack by two. Three. Yeah, they're not trying to attack him at all. They're going after Eirik. So, this should be interesting. Uh, Tempest only does damage to two adjacent enemies. Okay. 11. Mm -hmm. Almost killed that guy. Almost killed that guy. So these guys would be one. They're using some special ability maybe to increase their armor. Since it went up. I could kill that guy.
damage that guy severely. Okay, he is next, apparently. Maybe I should kill him, actually. To take a look at uh, what uh, order of what order of battle is. <laughs> what? Okay, I thought you could see who was. Hmm, my mistake, I guess. Valgard. Ooh, it has to use one will to move into range. Hmm. Could finish that guy off. Break his armor. I think I'm going to do that. It's going to take a while to build up your strats in this game. I never, unfortunately, I never played the, the factions. Uh, Two damage, right? Yeah. Ah, it's going straight for my my giant. Iric, yes, four. One strength damage to him. Break his armor, I guess. Three points. Open him up for attack. Stop attacking my Varl. Nobody's attacking the shield banger. Kill this guy with one extra. Whatever you call it, effort. What? Why didn't he die? Hmm, must have missed something. Can we do Tempest? And no, can't affect that guy. Regular attack then, six. Hmm. Next up is, uh, is the Chieftain actually, so we better... Ninety percent chance to do one damage. Not so great. Special attack, but now he broke all his own damage. That was maybe not so smart of him. Or he broke all his armor, so yeah. Hmm. 
Final Guard. 10, 12, 10. Should be able to take that guy out. Six damage, right? Should be fine. Oh, only one damage. 60% chance to do one. 60% chance to do two. goes Eirik. Well, he was an asshole, so... Should probably move away there. You uh, live and you learn, or maybe not live. You learn. Phone's lying dead at your feet, text flashing by at high speed, and then you can't read because I'm not that fast. Should probably let you uh, read that text. 11 renown, right. Okay, he didn't die. There they are, gods be damned, I've got to go wash off this blood, yes. You got kind of your ass handed to you there. Eirik is looking out the hall's window onto the bay. A fleet of longships approach with sails of bold reds and blues. Eubin. One banner I know well. Wagner. Next for Warl Kingship, last we spoke. The other flag looks important. Yeah, important guests. See what I deal with all day long. Ah, uh, things make a little more sense. You hoped I'd have a stake in saying... Everything's fine here when the royal guests arrived. Not me. The governor. Now I have to make sure there are no rotting bodies or pools of entrails still in the great hall before they come by. Can I ask one more favor? <laughs> no, Eirik, I've done enough already. Well, what is it? If you happen to stall our guests down on the docks, I wouldn't object. Maybe I will. Eirik and Volgard hustle from the mead house. To his credit, Eirik tosses the barkeep a spar of silver for the mess. You give an apologetic shrug and go to greet the new arrivals down at the docks. So we kind of took their sides there, right? Then nowhere to go except for the docks. Well, why not? Wow, lots of long ships actually. Yeah, but uh, I think this can be uh, pretty challenging, learning combat mechanics. Wagner. A familiar Varl steps onto the docks. In your mind you recall a much younger version tramping the halls of Grofheim, abundant in purpose. God, Subin, you're looking ancient. Thanks comes with being old. And if there is Wagner, there must be Hakon. Must there? Nice mustache. Still bleeding tributes from the poor and stupid old jocks. And what age at what age do you lose a sense of shame? Jorinder demands it. I'll take that over lingering to death in Grofheim. Speaking of, I had no sense that you were so far from home. 
Just returned from Arborang, in fact. I'm glad for it. Hakon motions to the other ships in the bay, st uh, sails still fluttering. Golden wolf head emblazoned on red. The king of men or someone on his behalf. Hakon. The king's whelp. The king's son, Luden. Don't you know, Scrivener? We visit his capital, he visits ours. It's how you make alliances these days. It's a miserable waste of time. Uh, yes, Hakon has it. I'd almost forgotten. It's a good thing you're around, Hakon. Then you're going to Grafheim. I have the distinct feeling I've finished my business in Strand and was heading there myself. We should caravan. We should. Give it a day. Uh, give it a day. In better circumstances, I'd drink a week away, but ah. Let's just be done. Find me tomorrow at the gates. What he's trying to say is the prince is a delight to behold. Wagner. Where's Moger? <clears throat> Hakon, have him find a place to put up the warriors. I'm heading up to meet the governor. A host of giants depart in his wake. You recognize a few, others are strangers to you. Guess I'm off to find Moger. See you in the morning, Scrivener. I guess we're a tax collector. Great. I'll be along. The young prince, the young prince of men ambles from his ship. He brushes off his tunic, scanning the beach with low eyelids. Ludin looks for all the world, the sort of boy who grew up pulling the legs from spiders. The long road back from Grofheim should be more interesting than most years, you think. Great. Weariness suddenly settles in and you chuckle to yourself about what an odd day it has been. Uh, one of the governor's men at the great hall could find you a place to sleep. On the other hand, if you're going to join Wagner's caravan tomorrow, it might not hurt to share a drink with Hakon or introduce yourself to the prince they spoke of so highly of. True. Who is this? Great hall. Hakon, or whoever that is. Right, let's go uh, here because we don't know what that is. Is this the right place? Oh, the prince. You find the prince at an inn. Guards blanket the building, including a sharp-eyed varl who must be working for Luden. A woman in red eventually waves you over and stands nearby, arms crossed. Greetings, Prince Luden. Oh, nice. Nice mustache. <laughs> yes, you're with Wagner. I don't remember you. Not exactly. I... I've known Wagner a long time. I'll be joining you back to Grafheim with my guards. Luden looks up for the first time. The woman doesn't react. Why? I work for the king, carrying tithes to the capital. We cross by chance. Oh, a tax collector. Fine company. What do you want? Hmm. Just to introduce myself, I hope to learn more about you. I have a habit of recording history. I thought we might talk about your visit. I have a habit of recording history because I have a quill pen in my hand. A Varl historian? Aha. Don't you already know? Your king and mine both have been practically trumpeting it around throughout the cities. I've been on the road a while, I'm afraid. 
Ludin takes a deep sigh. Whether tired or ungracious, you aren't certain. Maybe both. A formality, mostly. Wagner came to our capital in Arborang, and now we have to go to the Varl's capital in Grofheim to cement this grand alliance for the next age of men and Varl. You sound unconvinced. There's no need for it, and it's damn cold up here. You get the sense he's struggling not to complain outright. You take the opportunity to excuse yourself. Right. So we either go to Hakon or go to Great Hall. Mm, great Morale. Let's go to the Great Hall. At dawn you're awoke woken by a delivery of goods. At least you think it's dawn. Damn hard to tell with a sun that never moves. The governor's crest adorns the supply leathers. All there, just as promised, to your mild surprise. You wonder if Eirik had anything to do with that. 20 renown. So renown is our supplies, I guess, or our currency in this game. Your guards take the treasure wagon down to the gates. Wagner is already there. Already here. A while later, Luden and his men appear, groggy and disheveled. Moger steps forward. Wagner's quartermaster, if you recall correctly, in charge of his unwieldy entourage of warriors. You know him only in passing. He asks if you're ready to depart. <laughs> Why have a choice here? We're ready. You follow Moger and the other and join the others. Usually the smaller doors set into the gates would be enough to enter or leave the city, but the town guards have been told to push them open entirely. They mutter things under the breath uh, that are best not heard. Perhaps the governor expected you to draw a crowd, but there's nothing of the sort. Just frustrated, tired people. It summarizes Strand as well as a whole, you think. Yes. So, we're off. <laughs> Here goes our little caravan. Suddenly we have 67 days of supply. Oh yeah. 85 fighters, 366 barred. So now we get to to watch the wonderful uh, landscapes uh, inspired by Abe and Earl. If you haven't seen his uh, artwork, you should definitely check him out. The caravan stops for the day. A gift, says Moger, cracking open meat casks. From our gracious friend, the Governor of Strand. Hours pass with raucous laughter as the meat is passed throughout the camp. Drink a little, drink a lot, or toast to Wagner. I'm gonna drink a little. You go easy. Nothing against a good drink, but if anyone is going to keep an eye on things, it may as well be you. The revelers eventually fall asleep without incident. You rise groggily on the campsite, a cash casualty of merriment. Moger is already kicking warriors awake when you spot Luden stalking your direction. He sidesteps sleeping bodies. Better wake up, you nudge Wagner. You're needed. Ah, it's Luden. Always a pleasure. You look well rested. Wagner releases a caged jaw and receives a hard eyed stare in return. How long to Grafheim? Ha! We're only two days out of Strand, you know. Come, I'll show you on a map. Show us on a map, please. Oops, that took a long time. World map. Click and drag the map to look around. A 
portrait icon shows where your caravan is in the world. You can also click on any location to get some history about it. When you're done with the map, click the X at the bottom. Alright. So we're on Strand. Carlsfjord. Click here. Strand. As close as anything comes to a bastion of racial tolerance. Both men and Warl compete to scratch out a living in this. The biggest trade city along the west coast. Many people still believe the god Dengler still watches over it, granting good fortune. Karlsfjord. Fjord splitting off into Varl territory was named after Karl, the only Varl to ever become governor of Strand, albeit only for a short time, before the title returned to the human families whose ancestors originally built the city. Wandering Road. It's a pretty decently large map here. Silverstone. Fraxburg. <laughs> see. So this is Grofheim. The last home of the Varl and seat of their power. Founded by Arnfinner, Arnfinir, the second Varl king. Though the Varl have moved around a lot, most consider Grafheim their capital. The deeds of Varl are honored here, and all warriors are, uh, of worth are buried at the foot of the two spears, uh, where they are said to become part of the Varl's marsh itself. The Varl's march is uh, a mountain chain. Varl's March, Cradle of Grafheim, is named such for the belief that each Varl was of worth buried in King's Barrow becomes the bones of the mountains, eventually forming a new peak along the range. The size of each peak, it was said, would vary depending on the worth of the Varl. Mm -hmm. So where were we going? Already forgot. Oh yeah, they we're going to Grofheim, right? The Hanged Man. Vaderfell. It's probably the next city. Named Bad Weather. The gales that blow in, f blow in from the bay and around the mountain peaks keep Vaderfell in a generally unpleasant state. What really cemented the name was the kind of person who would live there. Men cast out from Strand for one reason or another, with nowhere else to go. Great. Really gonna have a fun time there. Right. We had north, then east, past the forts. Grofheim's far from Strand. Going to be a long march. You should have drank last night, Luden. Why not take the ships to Skrimmerstead? What's the point of marching? The Silverstone Bay is called that for a reason. It stays covered in ice all year. It would tear up longships. Too bad though. We could have shown you all the wonders of Skrimmerstead. Hack on. A half sunken city crawling with dredge, Prince. Dredge and glaciers. You like glaciers? Luden exhales through the nose, a poor disguise for his contempt. He turns and bats aside the tent, f tent flaps as he goes, barking at his company in the distance. Don't poke the ant till Wagner. He seems no happier to be here than you. Spend a few more days with the boy, old friend. You'll be looking for a tall cliff to hop off to. Ludin's got a shorter wick than Hakon. Thanks, Wagner. Let's get moving. Another half day to Vaderfell if we're lucky.
camp. Hmm. Camp is where you manage your caravan. During travel you can enter camp at any time by clicking the camp button on the travel hub. While at camp or in towns you can upgrade your allies or equip items in the hero's tent. The hero's tent. Special tent for them. You can pass time by using the rest tent. Resting will improve the caravan's morale. A high morale will reduce casualties in war and affect your willpower in combat. Each passing day will use supplies, so only rest when necessary. The training tent will allow you to safely try out any characters in a mock battle. That's nice. Click leave at the bottom of the campsite when you're ready to get back to the road. So this is our camp right here. Hero's Tent. Click it. Right, let's do that. Click on a unit to view stats, promote ranks and learn about abilities. Gunulf. Rank 1 Warhawk. Click on the abilities button to learn, yes. Tempest. Ooh. Nice uh, crab uniform, yes. The Warhawk uses his massive weight to, uh, to sweep his weapon around himself, hitting multiple adjacent targets. Friend or foe? Really? I didn't know that. For normal strength damage. Tempest triggers the Warhawk's passive ability, heavy impact, which in turns can cause a chain reaction of destruction if used in close quarters. Keeping the Warhawk out of harm's way until late in the fight will maximize his effectiveness. So we can, if we level up, we can hit up to four enemies. What's this? Heavy impact. The warrior hits so hard that any enemy standing adjacent to the his target on a strength attack will take one strength damage from the shockwave. Hitting a large target like a Varl or Dredge that takes up four tiles can potentially cause an impact across many more victims than hitting a single square target such as a human. Oh, that's true. Interesting. This only applies to enemies, I hope. Any enemies standing, yes. Seven out of twelve, what is this? Is this how high we could upgrade him to? If we wanted. What is this? Down here. Kills needed to promote to the next rank. Okay, lore, where you go to learn more about this character. Left click to add points. Renown is gained from defeating enemies. It can be spent to upgrade your heroes. Break is the amount of direct damage you can naturally do to an enemy's armor. Stats and max stats, okay. So we have a max for what we can upgrade. Hmm. Interesting. So I could... Have to promote him first or what? Left click to add. I guess I have to promote him. Ludin, rank one spearmaster. <laughs> I trust Ludin as much as uh, as far as I can throw him. Zero points available. Okay, we have to promote to get points, I guess. Hack on, warmaster. 
thundering impact. The Warmaster hits even harder than an average warrior with no chance to miss. He can wreak havoc with an additional plus one strength and plus one break damage to the target. Plus bonuses to heavy impact. Thundering impact is best used when carefully positioned to impact as many enemies around the target as possible in a single strike. That's pretty cool, I guess. And he has the heavy impact as well. Shield Master. Beard Master is more like it. Bring the pain. Always a good thing to bring the pain. Decorated his horns as well. The Shield Master strikes an adjacent enemy for armor damage before hunkering down and boosting his passive ability. Return the favor to return even more armor damage for one turn. By using Bring the Pain, the Shield Master can create a forward charge that punishes enemies for ganging up against him. Hmm. Normal break attack plus one to return the favor. Return the favor is one armor damage for each strike he makes. Uh, like uh, enemies done. Interesting. It's gonna take a while to, to really understand all the... Warhawk. This is the only guy we can promote. Item rank. Build higher stats, increase your item rank. Five points. Go for it. Oh yes. Two points available. Well, I guess armor break would be pretty good then. Or being able to use the Tempests more often. How do we increase it? Left click to add points. I thought I left clicked though. Hmm. Where am I supposed to left click? Seriously. Mm. If strength drops to zero, the unit falls unconscious, okay. That's why Eirik didn't die. Um, I'd kind of like to add some some points here. Why can't I do that? Uh huh. Maybe I can't afford it. Okay, cancel. Apparently, I can't afford. I don't know how many points it costs. Oh, I can increase shield break, that would be nice. What's this, by the way? I want to, now I want to read about it, and now I can't. Crap. Uh, uh, uh. We're not much of a defensive fighter, so let's increase uh, damage output. Cool, so let's check the lore. When Yubin became the world's king tax uh, the world king's tax collector, he was given a, an entourage of bodyguards to help transport gold collected across Rawn. Gunolf is the only one from the original group still alive, 
and for a good reason. Yep, we don't like uh, the publicans. So that's the only one I could upgrade, right? We don't have any items. Okay. Roster. Turn order. Items. We don't have any items. This is the roster area where you can make a party by dragging characters into the party slot above. Okay. For what purpose though? Uh, maybe if we uh, have to go on a hunting expedition or, or something like that, we can choose. Great morale, awesome. Heroes tent, rest tent, or training tent. Let's go to the training tent and polish those skills. The training tent allows you to test your party against a team of clansmen of equal power. Training fights never injure your allies or grant renown, but they do let you test strategies in safety. The trainer will give you hints about playing effectively and has something to say about each ability. Come here to test out new characters as they join you. Okay. That seems unfair, that person has a bow. Careful of the strong ones, hit them before they hit you, yes. This guy looks pretty powerful. Why does he have 12 defense? My guy only has 7 defense. Warhawk Champion. So we can do 4 damage to his strength. Now we want to do that, I think. Luden the Spearman. She moved out of range, wisely enough. I think we're in trouble here. He's gonna counterattack there. Should probably have kept this guy out here. Out of range. It's difficult to know how far they can move though. Let's actually move up here with him. Spear guy. Impale. Now we're gonna get a beating from, from this dude. Hmm. And we blocked his path. Hmm. I can see the problem now. Too will to move there. Yeah. Or wait, no, attack. 14 damage we can do. 8 damage and one shot her. This guy can't reach us, even if we kill her, I think. Or maybe if we kill her, he can... Ah, we'll see. We'll try that out. Smash the girl first. Oh yeah, they're getting up on him, of course.
Uh uh, what's it's a bit irritating. Crap in the way of my view there. Ten attack. It's not so great. <laughs> Next is uh, this guy again. Damn. We have to do something to break his armor, I guess. Oh yeah, bring the pain. Eighty percent to do one damage or break down his armor. I think we're gonna have to break down his armor a bit. Crap. Hmm. Having this human here is not. Uh, really helping us, is it? It's just out of range now. And we're gonna stay out of range, I think. Rest, I guess. Could move there and attack him. And he gets a turn. Yeah, we're gonna have to use our will. Move there. Attack this guy. Break as much armor as possible. Or armor that should do it. Oh yeah, we lose armor as well when we lose it. Not so good. They've got lots of uh, willpower. I find this kind of combat extremely challenging. Yes, uh, turn-based combat games are uh, are a challenge. But, uh, yeah, that's the point. If I move there, I can attack both of them. This guy gets to... ...move, I guess. We can actually take him down a bit. Move there. Wait, use his special ability. Did the uh, ouch? Don't get surrounded. They keep them in front of you. Yeah, thanks. Actually meant to um, reduce his strength a bit so he didn't do as much damage. But yeah, that was not to be. This guy can move up here and strike. What does the Impale do, actually? Well, we don't really have a choice, we have to... Could stand here and stick it to him, I guess. What does the Impale do? Knock back one tile, target bleeds one strength per move on next turn. But I just do, like, one damage to him. Hmm. How much armor damage can we do? Can do one strength damage for 11. Which would reduce the damage taken to this guy by one point. So we would have 
Now. We're in a bad way. Or we just take down his armor for the next strike. This guy basically won't have any attack left. And we're gonna have to rely on, uh, on uh, this ability here to, to finish the battle. Yeah, so he's gonna s hit him. We're gonna have two attack, which is not gonna do that much. So we have Sundering Impact, plus one strength, plus one break the target. Can't even use that. Hmm. We'll have to reduce reduce armor, that's the only thing we can do now. So now we're in trouble. Uh, next up he moves. We have to get his strength rating down. We have 10 attack. We'll do 6 damage to this guy. But we can actually bring the pain. Uh, should be interesting. Let's use that. Ooh, that was a mistake. <coughs> Uh, I should remember the bring the pain doesn't do um, doesn't do strength damage, so now we're in trouble. Impale. We can't be knocked back, I guess. If we're going to impale them, take advantage of it. No, his armor is very low. Could actually hit this guy for uh, eight damage. He would still have one strength, but what's he gonna do with that? You know, it's useless. Let's move there. Regular attack. No, oh, we just need to increase one, and then we kill him actually. Nice. Pillage. Oops. Luden. <clears throat> Two attack. Yeah, we should be able to just wear him down here. Armor. That should leave him open for a regular attack for 10 damage. Nice. <laughs> yeah, you have to have some forward planning. Um, but also you have to know about the abilities, what they do, so it's a lot of uh, experimenting. So it's really nice that they have a training uh, training uh, area you can try out all the all the different moves. Um yeah, I guess I have a kind of an idea. So let's continue on with with the story and see. Basic grasp. Weatherfell. Even the name means bad weather, where frozen wind sweeps in from the bay. They tend livestock, but most are just men driven from strand with nowhere else to go. Why else would anyone stay? We won't stop long. Bunch of giants coming here. 366 barl.
Let's see if we have to control a, a battle with 366 characters. I, <laughs> I don't think so. Peasant. By Harderborg, that's a lot of Varl for some missing cattle. What? A couple days back sent word to Strand about the cattle. Didn't expect an army. Alright. He looks pleased with himself until it sinks in that you aren't here on his behalf. <laughs> Poor guy. Where have your cattle gone? Wouldn't know. My boys seen men up the hills carrying them away. Don't know many men who can hoist a whole cow by himself. Scufflings out here maybe? Could they have Varl working for them? Not from what the governor told me. I'm going to take a look around and get camp set up. The peasant spits, his eyes anxiously darting about as the caravan set up tents. We'll be here no more than a day. There's silver for any food you've got. For hundreds of Varl? Are you serious? Whatever you're willing to sell. You're thinking of squatting? Not enough room for a couple of... For a couple hunters here. Forget hundreds of... Shut up. Hear that? Where's Luden? It's faint. Sounds like fighting and something else. Hakon takes off at, uh, at the run. Okay. Uh oh. Oh shit. These guys don't look so nice. Clicking anytime will automatically make a path. Yeah. Click once to make a waypoint. Why? Now select the next waypoint. This is often useful when you need to avoid certain tiles. Yeah, okay. Now confirm the move. Why? <laughs> Why would I want to run into this guy? Okay. Thanks tutorial mode. Spearmen can attack diagonally. Oh, yeah. Okay. And up to two tiles away. Press tab or click the top right banner to compare your stats with the enemies. Oh. I see. Now click the enemy to target. Armor blocks attacks on strength. Mm -hmm. For each point that an enemy's armor is higher than your strength, there is a 10% chance the attack will be deflected. Notice the chance to hit is shown above the attack button. Attack this enemy. I actually prefer to damage his armor, I think. Oh. I want to make the choices, please. So if I... Oh. Can't. Deflect. Deflected attacks do no damage. From here on out you will fail catastrophically if you don't break armor. Yes, I know that. Damaging both strength and armor is equally important. Please let me learn by myself, game. Great. So unfortunately the developers have fallen into the trap a bit uh, of modern gameplay design. They think they have to teach you everything by tutorial. So we have 14 strength against his 15 armor. These guys are the dredge, I guess. Next up is the... This guy. Well, let's just go kill him, I guess. Regular attack that damages armor as much as possible. Or damaged armor. Uh huh, and we can't charge into battle, unfortunately. We can't reach him. How far can this guy move? 
could potentially reach me if I run up. Just gonna advance this much then. <laughs> Off subject, my carrot juice has lemon juice in it. Who does that? This is one of the nastiest things I've drank. <laughs> yeah, that seems a bit uh, weird, to be honest. Who would do that? Yeah, but my first impressions of the game are really good. Um, we'll see how much the story mode plays out, but the combat so far is really interesting. So let's end his turn, actually. Uh, this guy's not gonna reach me. Now we want to move up to this guy and slam him hard, I think. Uh, 16 attack. Yeah. Before he gets a chance to uh, attack. Lower his stats. We're not gonna do a Tempest, we're gonna do a regular attack. We're going to 5 damage to strength. Why can't we use willpower to increase our attack here? Jason Dredge also takes damage when hit for 3 armor damage or more. Alright, well, 5 damage seems to be... Oh well, yeah, we can't use willpower for some reason. Focus this guy down, I feel. One hundred percent to hit, plus one strength, plus one break to target. We could do a sundering impact. Enemies adjacent to the target takes one strength damage. up is this guy. He's gonna walk here and he's gonna attack this dude here. Oh, it's important we focus this guy down. Uh, three strength damage only. If he gets injured he will have around nine strength. I feel it's more important to actually just hmm, lower this guy's strength so he has uh, less to respond with. Might be wrong, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, that guy move, moves there, hits him for three. Now we're gonna be in a bit of a bind because. Uh, Actually, we can move here and actually to the 10 damage. Hmm. Gonna have to help him out with that guy. There, we're gonna do the bring the pain attack to him. That's gonna make him hesitate to attack us because that would lower his armor. <laughs> Bit of a bind here. You can do like one damage to this guy.
Actually, I'm gonna go walk. Hmm. Well, maybe the standing here is not so bad, actually. Just gonna hit him. Yeah, why can't I use willpower on him? I don't get it. Maybe we should use Tempest. Tempest. Normal strength damage to two adjacent enemies. That would have a chance to hit him for damage. Would hit him for a little damage. If I can just lower his attack a bit, that would be nice. He's retreating. And using some... I don't know what he's doing actually. So if I charge in here, what's gonna happen? Because I want to finish that guy off badly before he does something. Yeah, see you later. Um, be right back. Five damage. Whenever an enemy falls in battle, plus wind willpower stars added to your horn. Using the horn will give one willpower to the active ally. Right. So we're in pretty good shape. This guy is gonna walk over here. Chip away at this guy's armor, I think. How much armor damage can we do? Three armor damage. Now they're ganging up on him. He only has five. Attack. Actually, we're gonna move in away, I think. Hmm. Ah, we should be fine, right? Two armor damage, six damage, six armor. That was probably not a good idea now. He's gonna get unconscious there. Fourteen. Can we use the heavy impact stuff? Uh, we can't because he doesn't have any willpower. Let's use the willpower there. Sundering impact. Adjacent enemies take one star strength damage. Nice. And that actually prevented him from dying. Awesome. If I move there, I actually still can't attack him. Okay, let's just move there. Turn. No, he has one attack. We can damage his armor though for two points. Oh crap, he's actually in the way. Great. <laughs> oh, four tiled, fat ass varls. It's gonna be the demise of this guy. That was unnecessary. Well, the idea was good, but 
Hmm. So if I increase his willpower, we still can't uh, get in position now. Because there are two fat ass varls blocking my path. <laughs> awesome. Well, you're gonna have to rest then. This guy knocks one of my men unconscious for no reason. We are actually going to finish this guy off. That was unfortunate. Uh, Hakon is ready for promotion. Hopefully I didn't lose... Gunalf or... what's his name? You're trying to get yourself killed, Luden? What are you doing? I was trying, finding a... trying to get a shot in between the plates. You've never seen a dredge before, boy? What kind of idiot? Break their armor first. Where did they come from? We didn't see them. They were just there. Hakon goes to where Vognir lies face down. The future Varl King lies motionless, aside from a spreading pool of blood. Okay, so Vognir got killed. Vognir's dead! Cut with keen edged sword. That sucks. <laughs> 